I'm so excited today to be joined by legendary photographer Mark Weiss. Mark, thank you for taking the time to join us today. I know you have a very busy schedule. Thank you so much. I can't believe all the attention I'm getting these days. <laughs> I've been in this room. I've been in this room for like seven years, just you know, trying to get all these photos in one book. Finally. Well, let's talk about your book, Mark. It's called The Decade That Rocked, and it's basically photos from your career. Uh, you've worked with Circus Magazine. You've done some independent stuff. Uh, from This is from 80 to 90, correct? Yeah, it starts out in the early years when I first got my first camera. So there's a little bit of a story on how I kind of got to be where I am. So uh, I'd say uh, from 73 to 80 is about 10 pages of photos. So I have Led Zeppelin, Peter Frampton, Aerosmith, you know, it just kind of shows you, it tells you the stories, the trials and tribulations, me getting arrested at a KISS <laughs> concert and, you know, selling my pictures for a dollar a piece. Uh, and then it leads into 1980, because 1980 is when I became into, you know, I became Mark Weiss, the rock photographer. You know, Judas Priest, Van Halen, Aerosmith, Bon Jovi eventually, Motley Crue, Ozzy. Uh, so all these bands that really became huge during that decade, uh, I was riding right, right along with them. So I assume that in the book, Mark, uh, you have some stories that go along with the photos uh, as well. Yeah, I, it's it's a narrative book. You know, it, uh, you know every, you know this book was very meaningful to me. So a lot of this, most of the shoots are from ex, you know ex experiences and and from album covers and on the road with bands. So it's it's very narrative for me. Uh, uh, there's a lot of photos in there that are just nice photos, but you know generally they're. The photos in here are, are pretty much like my, I selected, you know, full on and, and like, you know, choosing was just so hard, but I did narrow it down to 700 photos. I think it, <laughs> I think it was, I think it was down to 3,600 pages. And then the, the book was only supposed to be 280 pages and, and the inside editions, uh, the publisher said, you know, we're going to give you 400 pages. So it's a six pound, one ounce book. Well, and it's an amazing book. I've had a chance to see a preview of it. Uh, if you can just hold it up, Mark, so we can see the cover. Can you tell me a, a little bit about that photo on the cover as well? Uh, well, that's Guns N' Roses. And mm -hmm. I first mm -hmm. shot them uh, in 86, right before Appetite came out. And, uh, you know, Axel and the band, they, they kind of had a photographer already. And I was kind of a new guy. And they kind of didn't want to give me give me the chance to, you know, me to do a proper shoot, but they did. The publicist pushed for me. They knew I can get them in magazines. And then we developed a relationship from there on out. And then, you know, fast forward another uh, year, uh, they played in New York. They did a, the uh, the Ritz show and they did um, uh, the CBGB's acoustic and they did a shoot at my place. And then uh, shortly after that, they opened up for, guns, uh, for Motley Crue in Florida. And I was there shooting Motley Crue, happened to be there. Stephen Adler, the drummer, uh, you know, said, hey, Weiss guy, how you doing? And he goes, uh, I said, good, man. He goes, I'm shooting Motley, but you think we can do a quick shot with the band, after, you know, before or after the, the show? And he's like, let me ask the band. And he pulled it together, wrangled them, and, and I come back, and, you know, I'm like, are you guys ready? Because Axel was in a towel, uh, <laughs> you know, in cowboy boots, and, you know, they were just hanging. But that's that's what it was like, you know. I These grab five five minute photo shoots before or after. I mean, I got so many of them. A lot of my photo shoots are, you know, 22 hour shoots, like the Stay Hungry album cover with Twisted Sister. Right. Well, and I, I know I saw a video with Sebastian Bach from Skid Row and he was doing an unboxing of your book that you sent him. And he said that basically you're kind of responsible for getting him uh, hooked up with Skid Row. Yeah, I shot him in a band called Madam X. Uh, I shot the, the band Madam X before Sebastian was in the band, and then they um, they contacted me. They said, we have a new singer. We want you to come in and take some pictures. I met them, uh, got a good relationship going, and then a few months later, I was getting married, and I told my secretary to invite that band. They're probably not going to come, but just invite them. And they got in a car, a broken-down car, and they stayed a few days. We got to know each other. We hung out the Molly Pitcher in Red Bank. And uh, and then at the end of the night, Sebastian went up and uh, jammed with uh, Kevin Dubrow from Quiet Riot and Zach Wilde, who's just got into Ozzy Osbourne's band, who I was responsible for introducing him to as well. So it was really like, you know, it was like a, a you know, it was an amazing, amazing time after at the end of the concert, at the end of the wedding, um, to have these two young guys, you know, soon to become like superstars. 
Well, and I assume, Mark, that you have stayed friends with these people and, and kind of seen the evolution of the bands and of their music over the years. How are things different now uh, compared to when, you know, obviously the 80s was all about excess and things have kind of are a little bit more politically correct now. Uh, are you still, you know, really heavily involved in, in shooting and shooting some of the new bands as well? Or are you kind of sticking with some of the, the older ones that you uh, have relationships with? Well, you know, when I first shoot a band, it's like it's like I'm in it for life with them. You know, whether they play, you know, clubs, they get into arenas, stadiums, and they go down to clubs again. It's like, you know, whenever I, I always look forward to a new shoot because it's like four or five new friends plus their entourage, their managers. So, you know, I have so many friends from the '80s, and then just to watch them, you know, start in the clubs, and they go into the theaters and arenas. And then, you know, in the 90s, things got a little uh, rough for them, but I stuck with them when they needed to shoot. I wouldn't charge them as much. Uh, and then things kind of turned around and, and like things do turn around. Uh, so, you know, I was, I was always there for them and, you know, they were there for me. Uh, it's kind of like it works hand in hand. Well, and I see in the book, too, you have some of the album covers that you've shot, Mark. Uh, is, it, is there a way for you to choose one that really means a lot to you or are they all kind of like your children? <laughs> you know, they're just uh, yeah. it's something where you can't really choose. Well, they're all my children, but there's always a favorite, you know. <laughs> And it, it has to be the D. Snyder Stay Hungry because it was my first album cover, and these guys gave me a chance. I didn't do album covers before that. I did covers for magazines of Ozzy, Richie Blackmore, and you know Pat Benatar, but uh, never a concept, a conceptual album cover. And for me, as a photographer, you know, being a kid picking up that 12-inch, reading the liner notes, who did the photographs, that was that was always a thrill. And I always thought back then, like, what a thrill it would be for, you know have that picture on an album cover and then just to last for decades because magazines they only last for a month you know and after a month they go off the stands and people forget about them album covers they, they just stay around and, and look where we are today you, you go on the radio stations you know Sirius or online at the websites and that one image that depict that those songs that the band chose um, for that album at a specific time uh, ends up being my photo in, in a lot of the cases like Bon Jovi, Slipper and Wet, Dokken, Cinderella, Anthrax, a lot of, a lot of, you know, bands that sold millions of records that had made careers out of them. So I was, you know, album covers and that Stay Hungry one definitely did it because it opened up the doors and me and D went to the PMRC hearings together. Uh, I art directed the next one come out and play. So that one, that one was a game changer for me. Well, Mark, congratulations on this book. It's it's fabulous. I've actually waiting for my copy to arrive. I've ordered it so I can live my or relive my youth, I guess, too. So congratulations. And if anybody wants to order this, uh, what's the best way to do it? Well, you can go to uh, I have a site called the decade that rock dot com and I have little bundles. You can get photos, um, uh, T-shirts I have. I can personalize one, but you can go to Amazon. Uh, and you know, it's a little bit less, but you can go to Amazon, uh, and do that. I have postcards and things. So, you know, the decade that rock.com, uh, and I also have, uh, interviews and videos of people talking about me and the time. So it's, it's kind of a, a feel good site. I, you know, it's, it's, it's fun. All right, Mark. Well, thanks so much again for chatting with us today. Uh, again, an amazing book, The Decade That Rocked. And we are really looking forward to, uh, you know, getting our copy here uh, so we can have a look at, at some of these. And, and like I said, it, I'm sure it's a, it's a good memory for everybody who grew up in that time watching these bands. And like you said, when cover art meant so much too and, and photos, it was, it's just an amazing, uh, amazing thing to see all of your work. So thank you once again for speaking with us today. Thank you. And, uh, you know, good luck to all you budding photographers out there. Don't give up. If you have the passion to be a photographer, be it. Don't worry about the money. All right. Thanks so much, Mark. Thank you.